Hello, everybody. A very, very good morning to all of you, and welcome to the Kuala Lumpur Steiner Education um, School. And those of you who are present with us here, it's really nice to see you this morning. And those <laughs> viewing from home, a good welcome to you as well. So um, we're all gathered here today for an overview of the Waldorf curriculum from grade one to eight, from ages seven to 14. And I hope after today you will get a really good idea because a lot of people are kind of worried, right? Waldorf kids having too much fun. They climb trees and they don't do much work. They only play. So anyway, it's not true, okay? It's not all true. It is very much partly true. So the beauty of a Waldorf education to me is um, lies in its rhythm and also its curriculum. And before that, let me do a quick introduction of myself. I'm Patricia. I'm currently here for grade one, two, and three. Um, I do gardening and farming lessons with them. And um, yes, so that's me. Right, so back to our Waldorf curriculum. Um, the pedagogy of the Waldorf education really strives to develop the student's intellectual, artistic, and practical skills in a very integrated and holistic manner. So, um, and here we have today two very experienced teachers to share with us. And let me introduce them, um, a brief introduction, um, each of them. So the first one we have is TJ, and TJ actually wanted to like have a better world and be an agent of change <laughs> when she started in, in the media industry. And finally, she found out a better path is actually through education. And so she went to Taiwan and had her, um, not just internship, but her teacher's training in Taiwan for about one and a half, two years. And then she came back to Malaysia and she was actually a, a Waldorf teacher for grade six, seven in Penang. So, so they've, they've both had many years of experience being a teacher in the Waldorf School in various capacities. And she's currently a grade two teacher here. And Jessica, hi Jessica, is um, actually, she studied law, but she didn't really go into that path. So she went for a master's course in Waldorf education in Stuttgart, Germany, um, many years ago. And she also did her internship there. She's currently our grade one teacher, as well as a main lesson teacher, and she'll explain more about what that means. Um, and she's also our games and movement teacher, the Bothma gym um, teacher as well for us. So she has been involved in teaching the kindergarten kids in Waldorf school since 2013. And so she can tell you all about little kids. So, all right, without further ado, I would like to pass this time to Patricia. Thank you for <laughs> thank you, Patricia. <laughs> and yeah, welcome everybody. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps maybe we can start with um something from the audience here. Uh, maybe you can come up with a word, uh what you understand about education or a word that represents education. Is there any? Knowledge. Anything? Growth. Anything? Discovery. Discovery. Anything else? So perhaps here and there the Explore. No one would like to add anything. What do you think about education? <laughs> <laughs> what is education? Fun. Fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that we can add on to. Anything else Any, like to add in? So basically, yeah, these are all part of what we can see, like what we expect from education today. Um, yeah, and we will kind of, um, kind of, <laughs> yeah, we'll kind of get 
to the curriculum and we'll start with the curriculum to see how we actually integrate all this so-called um, understanding of education into our curriculum. Okay. So, um, let's talk about Wodong education and actually this is an education which focus very much on the child development. And as a human being, we have different stages of our self-development. So for the young age children, like yeah. zero to seven from, years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from zero to seven years old, at this point, um, their uh, physiology, their limbs, their arms, their, their, uh, their legs, their development, even their organs. Even their organs. <laughs> Yeah, at this stage, um, body development will focus on. And that is when, if you look at um, little children, it's their will force that they are working, like how they learn how to first pull themselves up to upright a little bit and then start moving, crawling to a plate, from one place to another, and from there to standing and then slowly walking, step by step process. Like um, these are all working on their will. We don't tell them to put your legs up like this to walk and put your legs up like this. It's all through imitation. Um, yeah, and also they discover this <laughs> discovery. Yeah. They, yeah. This, so this is also actually part of the education because education is not uh, start when they come into the school. First day of school, so you start the education. I think education is something goes on, go, or goes on the whole life long, since they born or even <laughs> not yet born. <laughs> Yeah, so it's actually the dev the whole development they starting already. So for the younger age children, uh, they are very much focused on their physical body because they need to get used to their bodies. They need to learn how to use their body and even their eyes or ears. How learn to look at the people and learn how to listen because as uh, as you know, if you have a child, uh, when they are very very young, like a small little baby. They can't really see you clearly. They can just have a blue image and then they can sense that, okay, maybe this is my mom and I can sense these shapes is my dad, something like that. So, but slowly they will discover and then slowly they will, they will develop their ability to see things clearly. So this is the, the process and yeah, everyone is like that. <laughs> and then, so the second part will be the feeling and the, and this will come to the second stage when they uh, drop their first teeth. Uh, uh, the f uh, yeah, drop their first teeth. Then uh, it's actually a sign to show that this little child uh, is actually quite ready for the physical body. They adapt to their own body and they know how to use it already. So now they will come to the second stage to start to, to develop their soul, their feeling to sense their own emotions and then how they, how they sense their senses, all the senses and everything. Yeah, it's at the second stage, which is uh, around, we cannot tell an exact date or day, but it's around seven years old until 14 years old. This is the second stage. So which this is actually in our uh, primary school uh, in World of Education. So we will have grade one until grade eight. And this is why we chose uh, to talk about the curriculum from grade one to grade eight here today. Yeah. And then later, after they are quite stable in this uh, feeling part, uh, they will go to the third stage, which is the thinking and the head mental part, this up, up here. So this is, uh, we want to bring it out in this, is because to show you the whole development of a children. It's actually from zero years old until 21st years old. Yeah. And I, I'm not very sure that if any one of you wonder about why primary school started at year six, uh, uh, six years old or seven years old. <laughs> because I asked this question since I was young. Why we, we, we can only go to primary school at seven years old in Malaysia? And why not we go four years old or five years old? Why everybody designed it in this way? And now after I, yeah, I go into the world of education and study quite a lot. So I come to uh, an idea that, okay, now I understand because we need to get ready for the foundation. I need to ready how to use my hand, how to use my finger, how to use my everything here with me 
then only I can make my learning better and smoother. So this is the stages of a, uh, uh, this is not about, uh, this is actually not an idea come out from all of education. This is actually a, a study, a research about human beings. So we based on this research uh, for the development of a human being, then we, we, according to this, we design the curriculum. Okay, yeah, okay. So it's, it's for, yeah, well, um, just now it's, then we will focus very much at the second stage, which is seven years old until 14 years old, the soul development. Okay. Well, we have a um, few way of um, passing our content, our lesson, uh, lesson plan content to the students. First mm -hmm. through like images, images, in appropriate images that is suitable for their understanding, what their consciousness at that point of time. Because at this stage, they are still very new, especially the lower primary school. They're still very new to um, uh, this world and also about the second phase of life that's when they start to be able to form memory because prior to that to uh, prior to that like kindergarten children you will see it's more like local memory when they see something then they can remember something but if they don't see it in front of them it they can't they can't imagine or think about it in their they don't have this capacity at that point so um when they are ready, like one of the way we assess students whether they are ready to uh, come into grade one is through a certain movement skills. Because from their movement, you can see their coordination and their understanding of their body and their physical body and their ment mental as well. Like through this assessment, we'll also, um, it's, it's in a pictorial images, we'll tell a story and we'll give a certain kind of um, task for the children. Like there will be an adventure that you'll have to go through a certain um, like uh, obstacle, like crossing, you'll have a wooden barrier for balancing, and then they'll try and walk and see if they can balance themselves. And then we'll tell a certain, like at the beginning, we'll tell, oh, there's this palace with a green flag up there. And then at the end of the assessment, we'll bring it up again and um, we'll uh, ask the children, so there are three palaces, which palace, uh, which color flag is there that we are supposed to enter? And then we'll see to what extent your memory is working at this stage. And from there, this is actually to build their understanding of what is going on around and what is the teacher trying to tell them through images. And of because, course, yeah, because they are still at the second stage, which is using their feelings feeling. so much. They are not so good in thinking and the logical things yet. So they need images to help them to stimulate their understanding. So they need to, they will, they will slowly learn how to think through these images. If you give them some images, then they can connect to what you are actually talking about. Okay, so, and the beauty. Beauty is actually the a very much our main focus during this age mm -hmm. because when we talk about feeling, we wish to give them some good feelings. Uh, it is not, uh, it's not like protect them in a safety bubbles and then uh, you, everything for you is only good and beauty and nice. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not like that. But before we bring the darkness of the world to them, we shall, uh, I think we might give them some brightness before the darkness. Because if they don't know uh, what is the good thing, what is the kind thing of the world, the beauty of this life, then they, they will feel quite uh, insecure in a way to face all the darkness. So we need to give them some foundation before they come to the reality. So this is the beauty. Uh, why this is beauty very important at this age? Because they are starting to explore. I think the explore and discovery is very, very much at this age. Uh, and because they starting to, what, they want to know more and they don't, it's, it's like more than, uh, they want to know something more than my family or my house. I want to know something out there. I want to know some other people besides my family and brother and sister. And I want to know some more. They need, they, they need to make friends. They need to learn something else outside there, but not, in the, uh, not only in the house. So, and when they're starting to explore, then we, we, what we give to them is actually very important. Because uh, the beauty here, we are not talking about the... Uh, the beauty Near aesthetic or yes. physical beauty that yes it's about. not in that way it's not like a typical way of beauty but the real world how beauty the real world is 
and then they can they can have this their own feelings towards all these real things because if we give them some books to talk about let's say i i show i show a child a picture of chicken and i say this is chicken and the feather is soft but they cannot feel it because they <laughs> we cannot feel the softness of the, the the feather through our eyes right yeah we need to touch it we need to feel it sense it then only we can understand what is feather what is the soft how it feels like yeah so this is why we want to bring in all this beauty is actually to let them experience the real world. They have the real life experience, not through others understandings. Uh, what we call um, other understanding as in uh, books or media or everything or YouTube or video. Actually, all these are created by human beings. So I write it down because I understand it in this way you you show it in uh, you write it out in your way you have your own feelings and i have my own feelings but this is understanding through others understanding but we wish to give children the first hand experience they have to build up their own experience their own senses and don't uh, their own feelings to get to know the real world it's not through other mediums okay. and then so the skills and doing part uh this one is because because this is actually a, a these are all related to experiential learning when yeah. we learn, and these are also um, related to self long life um, self um, self learning, mm -hmm. self lifelong learning. So the um, from here all these methodologies, we are kind of like stimulating their interest, their curiosity to want to actively participate in what they are doing, and then to come to an like and that, that's how we work into their skills. Because sometimes we'll do things that are related to them, like for example, culinary, cooking, they need to eat, and then they need to, they want their toys. So we make toys, their own toys. And of course we'll start with um, simple um, techniques. Uh, and from there, from the basic as well, um, of just imitate, pure imitation of what teacher is doing before they understand how this is working and all. Basically, at the yeah. beginning, it's just pure imitation at this stage. Then we will guide them to through doing, uh, not explaining, but just do it. We will just do it, uh, do it together with them. Then slowly, they will weave in, and then they know how to make it by themselves. I think this will, we will have some examples later when we talk about the uh, subjects. <laughs> okay, the lessons. Okay, so this one is actually... Yeah. Um, one of this way of us to plan, uh, one of uh, the ways for teachers to plan our lessons is to integrate this, our will, our feel and our thoughts together. At the same time, it goes on, of course, not exactly at the same time, but consecutively. Mm -hmm. And how from the will, the kindergarten, this is the developmental stages from zero to seven, you see that's the will part. Seven to 14 is the feeling part. And 14 to 21, where their brain, right brain and left brain hemisphere, um, it's uh, maturing, like the capacity is there, is when the thoughts come in and how, of course, that, that will be the focus at, during that age. But prior to that, these three, um, these three fold parts will be integrated in our lessons, in our main because, lesson. Because all these are not separated. It's like Part zero to seven, seven, you only have physical body. No, you have all <laughs> together. Yeah, but just where, which is the main focus at this stage? Yeah. Um, this is so, kind of different as compared to conventional education because mm -hmm. most of the conventional education they focus too much on the head, um, intellectual part, and sometimes it goes to the extent where children are just memorizing it, mm -hmm. and then or either the doing part where some students they are just so good in athletes, uh, athletics and sports, and they're not um, balanced in the intellectual part. So like current conventional schools is pretty much like that because at the end of the day, most of the time, this feeling part during in conventional school, it's not stimulated. The children are being stuck in a little box, like most of the schools, like in government school, in a box where it's just white and then you look in the front and then there are alphabets that has no relation, they have no relationship to, it's very abstract, but we're doing it because we want to please our daddy and mommy, that's why we come to school, and we just absorb it, even though we don't understand. And this is a form of habit that um, we are kind of cultivating a, a kind of unhealthy habit. It's just depending on someone to tell them something all the time, wrote, memorizing, not realizing what they're doing. And this participation is, this active participation comes from someone else 
to do that because at this age, if you have a child, you will see um, during um, kindergarten to early primary years, it's a lot of the feeling is so important, like whoever that they need, your teachers, this authority, it's really, it's like a form of reverence you feel for your surrounding, the people, those people that they feel comfortable with. So this is how we stimulate their feelings. And these are all part of like um, how we even design um, subjects in a way or like the duration of a teacher to follow a child, the, the students. Like unlike normal schools, one year we'll have this teacher, the next year we'll have another teacher. But in Waldorf School, ideally, we'll have one teacher to guide the children all the way to 12, um, grade eight. It's all part of developing together with the teacher and the children both at the same time. And with this, because um, the teacher ourselves, we are also developing at this stage, we are able to be aligned with the children's um, feeling, consciousness at that stage where they are also developing. So they can feel it from the teacher that, oh, my teacher don't really know this, but the, the kind of effort that she puts in or he puts in to, to do this thing, it matters for them. and It matters for the teacher, so it matters for them too. So that's how we start at the beginning of the early stages of um, primary school years, this feeling part. And also play, like what we're talking about, fun. And how is it fun? Learning is not just sitting in a box and reading, looking at, um, reading a book and looking at the um, blackboard. But it's beyond that. Like that's how we were run integrate. around together with the chicken and dogs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. True, true. And then yeah. Okay. So we uh we the okay the how to say the lessons in the world of school. Actually, we we structured them in. We will separate them in main uh, two parts. One is the main lesson because we will actually have this main lesson two hours per day every single morning. So the first lesson they come into school will be the main lesson, and what we will talk in, what we will teach in main, during main lesson time is all this subject. Uh, uh, from conventional school, like how we how we were in the conventional school is like. Okay, mathematics, you have mathematics teachers and then language, language teachers and then history teachers, geography teachers and then science teacher. But in World of School, the main lesson teacher has to, <laughs> has to teach all these subjects as main lesson subjects. Yeah, so, uh, and we design it in, in, into a block, uh, three to five weeks. We will focus on one topic and then we will go deeply. So we, the, the children, they come to school for these three to five weeks, they will be very, very consciously and very focused to learn something new to them in their life. And then they will start from, they don't know anything, first, ex, first uh, explore to this thing. And then they slowly uh, grow, grow to, uh, how, to, how to say, they slowly learn how, what is it actually and how we can, uh, how we can make it uh, make it uh, do it out and then how we can do it better so it is this is actually a whole progress starts from nothing to something yeah so we we design all these lessons into uh, main lesson blocks so yeah let's say i'm having mathematics blocks now uh, mathematics block uh, for four weeks and then the next uh, my next block will be my language block together so they will take turns mathematics and the language and then yeah it is not only uh something like touch and go you come uh okay i do i know a little bit and then i change quickly change to another things and then maybe i will forget what we are doing actually uh just now so this is this will be a two hours uh focusing time for them every morning and this is very much working with their head and then let's talk about the the lessons and then the first one mathematics yeah, um, it's quite interesting how um, World of Education, they bring in, um, they start introducing mathematics to children because, again, it's related to them, the relationship with numbers, the quality of numbers. How do we present numbers to them? We don't come up and say, this is number one, this is number two, this is number three. We can ask a question. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps what do you think um, qualities of numbers represent? Like Maybe like number one. What, what represents can represent one? number one? What? One. Anything that you can think about, you answered before. <laughs> um, can you have, um, maybe, like, uh, you can have some understanding, share your understanding towards what you understand from this number one. 
What do you understand? Mm -hmm. What one represents? The self, yes. Yeah. Self, that's it. There's only one and I. Anything so, else? <laughs> the best. The best. The best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about around us, the surrounding in nature and, and our where we are, like our surrounding one world. environment? One world? One world. Yes. Yes. One, oh. world. Mm. one tree. One, one, one tree. One tree. A, a trunk. A trunk, yeah, from one, yeah. From a perspective, it can mm -hmm. be. <laughs> a, a more general one, yeah, like yeah, something yeah. that in this world, there's only one of it. Like yes. So, yes. Sorry? The yes, the earth, the sun, earth. the moon, mm -hmm. things like that. That's how we start with um, quality of numbers. Like, we'll tell a story or come up with a story, localize the content with some um, little, like fairies. Do we have fairies here? But not, we don't use fairies because for fairies are more westernized. Yeah, um, we use like our local Orang Bunian and local characters here and bring it in. And then from there, the story, uh, from the story, we bring in images of the ch uh, images to the children by their own participation in listening to it. So the, usually it's like the child will go through a certain task and adventure to discover the qualities of numbers. Instead of us telling them straight away, we'll start out with the storytelling. And from the storytelling, um, they will draw out their work after that. Uh, what they understand from the story. In fact, sometimes we'll guide them to, like for me, I will, uh, I will ask them to write a scene, uh, draw a scene from the story, instead of saying like, I want you to draw this, but maybe like I'll ask them to draw a scene from the story that um, you are most comfortable with. At first, let them express what, this, for me, this is to understand the child. And then at a later stage, only we'll bring in like the technique of drawing in some ways, like how they want to draw something and they don't know how to draw something. So that's when through main lessons, we'll also bring in such a technique. Yeah. And, and ma mathematics actually this uh, the topic that we will cover from grade one, quality of numbers and four processes, until grade eight, trigonometry and financial maths. So yeah, this is actually the whole process of how they learn mathematics from grade one onwards mm -hmm. so yeah um, we will go towards the four processes and tables that this this mm -hmm. is grade one and two and of course four processes we don't go in like class and it's it's it must be not it can't be abstract that's the main um, aim right now at this stage so instead of like saying three plus two is we'll have a five is the child can come up with one plus one plus one, one and one. Sometimes they don't know the term one, more like one and one and one. Some will say one and four, some will say two and three. So this is to stimulate their imagination, like creativity. It's not just three plus two is five, a, a fixed kind of concept to them. So we'll bring that in the four processes. And let's say in divide, instead of saying that I want um, uh, 10 divided by five is, I will, I will say like, oh, I have, uh, uh, yeah, I have, um, 10 durians, but I want to, um, yeah, I, I want to share it with five of my family members so we can get all equal number of durians. So they will take a counters, they have their little pocket calculator, which is made out of counters that um, some of them, some of my students, they actually collected from um, out in the nature, seeds, little seeds, they have, they collect a hundred counters. Uh, currently I have a student collected 400 counters inside. <laughs> yeah, little seeds they, she collected from the beach. And we have some counters there, and from there, they'll take out 10. And then I want to give one to mommy, one to daddy, one to Coco, one to Jeje, one to Titi. And then they will divide like that, so they have an idea. And like division, uh, division so I have 10 durians, but I only have two hands. And I want to carry these 10 durians to my house. How do I carry it? I have to come back. How many times do I have to carry it? So each time I can only carry two durians. So I'll carry, then they'll imagine like, okay, I'll carry this too. And then I have to come back. This is the second time I'm going to carry my two durians and then I'll go. And then have a form of imagination through also the counters. Yeah, this is actually the images that we are talking about just now you know, for the understanding. So we bring in the images so that they, uh, so to make the mathematics or all the knowledges not so abstract to them because they are not so good yet in this thinking part, that this is how we, we help them to connect to what they are learning. Mm -hmm. And you can see as it grows, the measurement will be related to what they're also their main lessons, the other main lessons. Like mm -hmm. at this stage for grade three, measurement comes in like forming. 
So they will need to measure the distance with their body at first. And also with the, they, they observe the sun as well. They look at the sun and the timing and which part is southwest, our plants, our gardening plants, which part, and it's all like some it's so and grade four five lessons and then this will be grade six yeah grade six math business math and then percentage and graphs tables and so for fractions actually mm -hmm. like instead of like just we will have like something to class like for well, like fruits to class and then we'll sort it out in class right like we'll and like for fractions now it comes to part that they are getting from understanding what fraction means and when it goes to up to business at this stage, more of the around 12 years old, where they like begin to have analysis, cause and effect, and something happens, like cause when you do something. So when you bring them out, like for, for me, mm -hmm. like back then when I had a great six student, bring the supermarkets, and then we'll um, buy ingredients for our high quality class. And then over there, there's like percentage. They start calculating the percentage. They'll take a piece of paper. They start calculate, calculating, oh, um, discount. Now, how much do we get? Uh, how much? And how much do we need this ingredient? Mm -hmm. So that's where they will um, use what they need in, uh, in this uh, curriculum in there. Mm -hmm. Graphs and tables. Everything is pretty much at this stage. Primary school is all related to what your lifestyle yes. you need at this stage. Um, percentage, the interest, all this. To banks and then they will talk to the bank uh, of we want to find how if you wanted to loan and the interest and then they'll say, okay. so they will maths formula instead of abstract formulas, we will really learn how to use these formulas in their actual life. Like this is something that we can't really get um, mainstream education system. This provides such an opportunity to test prove this math, uh, maths formula. And in, in what we're doing throughout the school curriculum, we don't have all these step-by-step -step ways for them to prove and find out how this leads to that and why it's really a special formula. Existing in this world, come up with formulas, they will do this similar process of it, but the guidance of the teacher. Yeah. And all the way to <laughs> what we cover up to grade eight. This is some of the uh, for lower grades, how they learn their tables. You can see this one, this is actually a skip counting. Uh, they, the, my children, draw, uh, my student draw it out, and then, uh, yeah, this is how they learn for the time table. Like last, last time when I was young, my teacher asked me to take the little exercise and print it the time table, and then we have to bring it all the time and then memorize it. Uh, this is our experience, and then, but the children actually they have their own rhythm in it. Mathematics is very, very much about the tempo and the rhythm. So they actually, if we bring them together with the tempo, then they automatically can, can get what is next. They will find out their own ways. So they don't have to memorize it and suffering with what is, what is 10 times 4 and what is 9 times 9, something like that. Yeah, they don't have to suffer this, but they we, using their rhythm and tempo, then they automatically can, can work together with all these numbers. Yeah, and this is much related to the music lesson too, actually, and especially like the fractions. If you know music, the theory of music, then you can, it's actually related, all this weaving together, the subject. And oh. then this is the table. This is the no. This is the time the skip counting. So when we start with the time table, 
uh, then this is the earlier part, and then this one will be the multiplication table. This is a bit small, but this is actually one times four. Uh, no, one times four is four. So it's eight. Three times four is twelve. Something like that. So we will have some little activities before we draw this out. We actually have some little activities in the classroom to show them, and they they will see it clearly. Oh, one times of two. A moon cake is a, a box uh, of moon cakes. Then there is there are four moon cakes inside, right? Then I said I have this is a box of moon cakes. A uh, one box equals four. Two box equals eight. Three box equals uh twelve something like that and then until 12 box so we will do this until for all the 12 times table yeah so and this one will be the place value and we will also actually tell a story the little squirrel want to collect their nuts and then so they place their nuts under the tree <laughs> then how this is how they arrange them because they want to know how many nuts they have collected yeah so they, they arrange okay if uh if they collected 10, then they will put 10 nuts into one bag. And then if they, if they have 10 bags, then they will put the, the 10 bags into a basket. And then if they have 10 baskets, then they'll put into a box. So this is uh, to show that the, uh, then they will actually understand it quite, quite fast. <laughs> and then you don't have to explain too much and then they, they already know how to do it. And from this, they can work their calculation better. Because they understand what the numbers is meaning, yeah, what, what the number means. So they, uh, this is how they learn mathematics at lower grade. Uh, lower grade. And then this one will be higher grades. This is actually a grade seven, uh, grade seven mathematics. And so they will need to do this, yes. And the golden ratio and rectangles, just, just uh, some samples. And yeah, and they, they actually need to use the same similar methods, like they have activities to sense the angles and then to sense the space and then to find it out why, why uh, a circle is 360 degrees, <laughs> something like that. They have to really move themselves to sense it. And if, I, if there's a triangle, then how, uh, what degrees is in this one angle? Then they have to they have to move themselves in a triangle like three people and then they need to see with a stick in between and then they need to, they need to and this is how they get all these uh, formulas so they didn't the teachers would not give them the formulas directly and they will ask them to find out and this is then they can understand very well they can have a work They know how to use it and they do, they know where the formula comes comes from. Okay, so and um, next one will be from going and so I to that um hmm. one of the methodology for teaching mathematics in the lower race as well is conversion oriented lesson. Like if when we teach time table instead of like doing the rest four six then we have like two six or either some of the two four six eight two four and then they'll be moving. And this counting as well, like I'll have like a little um training session. Choo 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 choo, trains coming, so they start counting one, two, three, their footsteps. So this um rhythm is going into their body as well. From the understanding of these numbers, this is all about rhythm. Yeah, um, one of education is movement oriented, that's kind of like how it goes around. And uh, and probably it's very set uh Home growing is actually a very special lesson <laughs> uh, because I think it's only for home education where we have this special home growing lesson in our main lesson. So home growing is actually uh, very much related to geometry. Um, so to start from grade one, uh, we will we will introduce with straight lines and curved lines first. So they will experience how to sense the whole the, uh, the space, and then they need to balance themselves, how to use their hand to draw the lines, how to draw straight lines without using a ruler, how to draw a beautiful circle without using a, 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 a yeah, projector. So this is this is how we started for uh, reform drawing. 
So uh, grade one will be straight line curve line, and then grade two will come to mirroring, mirroring. So yeah, this is grade one work. This is grade one, grade one work. So they they do this freehand. Um, it's actually very much related to the beginning. The reason why we have form drawing because when we are doing form drawing, it's actually an expression of our inner self of our understanding. Like for example, maybe if you can try to draw a straight line. When you're using, when you need to draw a straight line, you need a certain amount of attention and focus to draw that line. So that is actually very much of your thinking. Think you're actually unconsciously, subconsciously using your thinking to draw this line. And when it comes to curve, it's actually a very feeling kind of feeling. Like you wrote about it, a flow of feeling, and children are feeling it. And this is also the first step to recognizing the surrounding, because everything around us is formed out of straight line and curve. And from that, the children have us like so introduce this is in fact this, this will be our first land main lesson when we uh, when we start with one. So because it's all related to their alphabet writing and numbers and even nature, because these are all part of nature observation and stuff. So if you look at it, there are also different types of form drawing, like the ones that are going in um uh, there's repetition going up there like like this go. It's actually very much related to your breathing. Because when you're breathing, it's like you're flowing with your breathing. You need to focus on your breathing as well. But you don't actually consciously focus on your breathing. But when you're drawing, the child subconsciously work on your breathing to concentrate as a kind of natural breathing rate, rhythm that is ongoing in the child's development. And all this mirroring image is actually for the left and right hand skill brain. Like you can see when sometimes the child Left side is really nice, and the right side is really um, it's not so symmetrical. Then you can see their developmental stages as well, like to what extent. And then you work on it, you try to perfect and try to make it as uh, symmetry to be as obvious and clear as possible. And that is actually to um, it, it's a kind of motor skills related to uh, the neurons in your brain to so have a disconnection with your left and right hemisphere of the brain. <laughs> Most of the time, um, I like my students, like for grade one students, they come in, they don't know what they're talking about, like teaching maths. Like if you try to explain to them, some some can't just can't grasp the concept. Then instead of forcing, continue to force them to do maths, you'll give them form drawing. Because this form drawing will help with this neural system in your brain that it develops itself in such a way. That when we present our lesson, they are able to grasp and understand what we are talking about, and it actually works because, it, like my students, it's really because I have like a premature uh, child in my class, and she's a bit very slow in understanding um, what what I'm teaching. We know all the other students can get it, and I will focus more on form drawing for her, um, for her to work on, and also for Max, it's so rhythm, sleeping work, so, so related, and these are ways that we bring in. To help them understand that and that form of reason. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, for lower grades, we will do these kinds of form drawings. And then later, uh, this is actually from grade one to grade eight. So this is how it works. Like grade four is really pattern, grade five would go into freehand geometry. It's an like freehand geometry uh, in the school, like uh, grade five. And then the precision geometry will be grade six. Proven geometry is grade seven. And here is also this here is also where they need to prove all the formulas. And then they need to use all these kind of things to, to make themselves understand how the pattern flows. And then the tonic story, the negative comes. So this one is uh, some works of grade four weaving patterns. This uh this one is freehand geometry, example for uh, freehand geometry. So the the circle is drawn by using hand only. And then this one will be the precision geometry. We are not only drawing it out to make sure they can make it precisely. And the zero point one also matter. Then they need to practice. This is one of the project lah. I bring it out. I brought it out to these students. And then they have to try to make it. They nail the nails on the uh, wood, and then they have to use the string to make it straight up. Because if 
uh, they tried and failed for quite a few times for this one because because of the zero one, <laughs> zero one or zero point one, <laughs> and then it's like oh no, cannot <laughs> and, and redo and redo uh, for quite quite some time. And this is how they learn that okay, the zero point one is actually very very important. Yeah. So uh, this is some work for the students. And we're we're in, in grade six. Yeah. The reason why we have precision geometry in grade six is because at that point of time, they um their their mental capacity is more mature. And they 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 have they and also this is throughout this the, the pre analysis pre-university period where certain this this time we need a certain form of harmony and balance like rule law and order like all this position how things should evolve in such and such a way and then that's why we bring it in a more precise way it's actually helping them to uh look into this world and at this stage like, yeah just there's so much uncertainties and things like that but. Through curriculum, through math, through understanding formula, we can have certain certainty and security in life. And that's why. Okay, let's talk about language skills. Language skills. Okay, so uh, if you have some friends who is sending their child to World of Two, especially at lower grade, then you will think like, oh my. They are children are actually every day having fun, having stories, and playing around, and then. Um, yeah, very less work. But this is actually the whole planning from grade one to grade eight for about language. So from grade one, actually, we, uh, yeah, grade one and two work. We focus very, very, very much in images and also their oral work because uh, the way that we learn language is not true, uh, not directly show the the kids the writing because. All the writings, no matter Chinese character or English alphabets and whatever writing, is actually very abstract. Because this uh long, long time ago, the people in <laughs> in the in the past, then they would draw something to tell the story, to send the image. They would use use drawing before they create the character, create this letter and alphabets. So Actually, so all these alphabets are alphabets of practice are, are actually very abstract to the, children, the little children. They cannot really understand why this word has this yeah, is uh, means this. Why why this word means this? And then so they have to uh, force themselves to memorize it. Okay, this means this. They uh, subconsciously they have to force themselves to memorize all these words and characters. But if we use images. Then they can relate it very, very, very fast. Because how the the people in the past they create all these letters, they have something to refer to, right? They are not uh, just simply uh, designing or creating. They have something to refer to. So we need to bring them back to back to the yeah to the origin and how all these happen. So start from images and the oral work and. Before they can write it down, then they actually talk very much, right? People, human beings, when we talk very much. And this is how they understand a language. Since very young, like a little one, one and two years old, they will start to learn how to say something because they imitate and they listen to you very much, right? They listen to what my mom keeps talking to my dad, and then they will learn <laughs> what is the conversation, and then they try to understand what you are actually talking about. So listening is actually the first step for learning language. So they need to they need to listen to uh to the teachers, and we are trying to tell as much as story as, as we can. So to let them listen as much as they can, and then from listening they learn how to how to speak and yeah and decide. So this is uh this is the major and oral work, and then slow and great tool. We will more focus on the handwriting, for a proper handwriting, including the cursive writing, because this is a, uh, yeah, uh, great for great one. They will more, they will need more images, but great two, they are more stable now. They can, they, they kind of can can connect to the alphabet, they, to all the alphabet, and so now they can they can put them down on the paper. They can write down what they listen or what they. 
This is the handwriting, and then grade three, you will focus basic grammar and reading. Grade four, comprehension and completion. Uh, grade five only, you will start with the sentence sentence structure. But this this uh, doesn't mean that this doesn't doesn't mean that we didn't teach them how to form a sentence at lower grades. But we bring in subconsciously. We will bring them. Uh, we'll show them some beautiful sentences or some nice paragraph in a poem. But we don't explain about the grammar at this age. So we will bring in the, all these sentence structure things and all uh uh okay yeah later age and also the sentence analysis and uh grade six. Then this will slowly bring them to literate uh literate. Styles, they need to have their own ways of writing. It's not like just copying or following, uh, memorizing from some some books, reference books, and then I copy it down. Oh, you know. So this is the how they develop, and then so great in the literature, poetry, and biography. And besides it, language is not only writing. It's not only writing and reading. It's actually the older part will be very much this lower grades is recite and retell. What well, after the teacher uh, uh, told a story, then the children need to need, need to learn how to retell the story. Yeah, so they will use their own way, use their own words, use their own sentences, make their make their own sentences to to tell the story. This usually comes the next day, mm. like um before we have to start our main lesson the next day. You ask the students to have a reflection. So, what do you remember from this story? So, big sentences will come up, and maybe it will be very difficult for them to tell out everything at the beginning. So, I do have some students who are able to do that, but with the help of the, um, all the other classmates, they will have big sentences of stories coming back so that it really goes into them and doesn't just flow. Like, so. And this is also the foundation of making sentences. So, they, they know how to say it out. They will find their way to structure their sentence and then fix it out. Then this will get them to really write it down the whole paragraph. We and introduce grammar, like for grade three, for example, basic grammar. How do you really introduce? You don't say, okay, this is past tense, we talk about this. We actually have a form of like, okay, where we are, the children will be like standing in a line, like what represents the past, present, uh, past, present, and future. So they will have a little play going on to kind of guide them. For this is when it's a pass, then we eight, and then we eight we all stand here, and then two eight or stand there. You can take a break first, and these are all like the way we introduce grammar. Also through movement and their their life, how their how it's related to their life in grammar, not too abstract because those abstract ones will come up through their own understanding in their high school, like middle and high school. And so. Uh, from reset and retell slowly, grade three, uh, yeah, three or grade three, no longer dialogue. Grade three will start some with some dialogues. Then they will need, they will have a little play. Like after I told the story, then they will need to like, okay, you will be the man, and I will be the old woman, and then we act it out, and then we have to say the dialogues. Yeah, it's not not yet the narrations, but the dialogues first. Yeah. And then the little play, so we will go into the little play. And then uh, for higher grade, there will be a proper drama. And then grade eight, they will have a big project to have their own uh, drama presentation, which this is where they need to do the setup. They need to sew their own costume. They need to get ready for everything and plan out the script and also the dialogue. They write it down for the yeah. For the drama presentation. This is like a year end project for grade eight, and then this is going to be the, the biggest project for them to of, of, of during the whole primary school life, I think. <laughs> yeah, because you will you, you will need to use all whatever you learn during these eight years. <laughs> yeah. Later maybe you, you will see how why they can do the setup by themselves too because they have work. <laughs> <laughs> all this life where you learn from like uh, from physics, yeah, acoustic sound. Yes. But where they learn from physics in grade six and seven. So these are well, all these scientific um uh, uh, scientific terms and all. It's not really there, but more of moving it to what they need, which is like when they need to present a drama as a certain form of setting and how it's related to science. Okay, so yeah, maybe you can try. 
this one, this is a, a blackboard drawing for grade one language block. We try to find the alphabet. This is how we present alphabets to children in grade one. Some human alphabets. We will try. D. D. Yeah, D. R. R for the road. S. That's but usually we'll kind of also relate it to the words. Like for example, the D is door, door. The R is the road, the mountain is N. So that's how we bring in the alphabets. Yeah. And this is the valley. D. This will be three. This is a house. So we will we will hide all the alphabets. And it's not looking at our and explore. Yeah, let's discover it themselves. And the children are quite fun actually. <laughs> and so we, we try, you know, sometimes, sometimes I don't even realize that I'm actually sitting on the wrong side, right? and they could see it. <laughs> oh, they're having yeah, and then we look. Yeah. This is how they started from grade one. And so, yeah, then later age, then we will give them a. a this is one of my my lesson with the children that I wrote them a letter. But I use the name of mother <laughs> to 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 yeah to tell them something. So they receive a letter. Wow, I got a letter from mother, and then they are so excited. They, they were so excited to they wanted to, they wanted to write a reply to the mother, and then yeah, and this is how they reply. Hi, mother, would you feel pain when we step on you? So this is actually uh, the, the the reply is all done by the children, not from me. I didn't guide them, but they come up by themselves. But what I show them is actually the letter I wrote for them as a mother, as mother. And then from the letter here, they from the letter they receive, they can they can they have their own feelings and they can come up with something that they really want to tell or they really want to ask, they want to know. So they come out with their own letter. So this is actually quite a touching lesson for me, <laughs> for myself. I personally feel touched because uh, when I when I heard the children ask the first question, "Will you feel pain when we step on you?" and I am like, "Oh, <laughs> they are really so connected to to all this nature world." And then so yeah, and this is. Thank you for giving us the ground to stand upright. Thanks for making all the creatures creatures grow. We appreciate that you grow us from great to. And this is done by the children. So yeah, this is how we bring in the handwriting and the learning. But and of course there are grammar in it, but we don't we didn't bring it uh, consciously. So we didn't explain to them why we need to do like this, but they automatically can can use it by by themselves. <laughs> so this will be the yeah I, I this is a photo I searched from internet to show uh, the drama presentation uh, for grade eight. So they need to do the set up the whole set up and then they need to show their own costume. There are more I think you can search more photos like this online actually. So if you want, if you type photo from our presentation, so this is this is how this is what we want to give them to see. And then nature and science, we are in a <laughs> open space, a, a forest, a forest school, and nature is actually actually our whole classroom. <laughs> our classroom is nature, and then we we talk. We work very much with the nature story and nature observation at the same time. And we will tell nature stories in the classroom and we will have this, all these physical words and all the observations out there 
in the in the nature. Um, for science teaching, it's very much a phenomenological approach towards science. Like how a phenomena comes up and how we observe this phenomena and how and from step by step from that observation, we will come up to uh, um, why is this happening? It's questions. And from that question, it will lead to a certain understanding. But prior to that, it has to be again no abstract um uh, no abstract content. Like nature story, we kind of start with like for example, what kind of I mean there are some schools where you don't have such a such a surrounding, like in the forest, where you don't have the opportunity to observe nature every day, then they will have a kind of block, a main lesson block for nature study. But for us, we are pretty much like in nature. So um the block, uh, if you don't have a block, but it's integrated in our daily lessons. So before our class start, we'll tell a sort of story like, for example, something like, for example, I'll tell a story of um, giant uh, uh, elephants. Long time ago in the forest of Malaysia, the elephants really cause a problems. They're so big, they're the giant, forest giant. And every day, they would just run around everywhere and like, ignoring the rest and stepping on the little ends and all. One day, um, the little mouse was uh, the little mouse and uh, the elephant and the elephant and the all the elephants and he went up to the deer and the tree and the deer and woke up and woke up and screaming in pain and couldn't get in trying to understand why is the deer coming, why is it so painful? And he ran to the water and jumped into the, uh, to the pool, to the pond and tried to get out, get, get the thing out but couldn't and got even more pain. Because the mice, the mice, the friends would hold on to his ears and even piercing through his ears even more. And finally, after a long torture, the mouse picked up and told the elephant. Look, this is how we feel when we step on earth. And from there, um, from then on, the elephant will never that's why you see today the elephants are walking really slowly in the forest. Because we want to make sure that no hands. So this is kind of like related to what um yeah the discipline part as well, how we bring in science, even language, all like passing some moral messages behind. It, it can come up with plants, animals, all sorts, which kind of have to kind of read it in it. Uh in coming up with stories. And fortunately we have um a collection of oral asking animal tales, but it's pretty much similar to this kind of concept. So we have a correction from that. And from there, nature stories and nature observations will go out like for once a week, we'll have hiking in our trail here. We'll go up to the mountains and hike, and then they'll, um, they'll, they'll see like certain plants there, like, oh, this fish tail plant, palm tree. Like, because it looks like a fish tail, and then they'll look into, oh, this is a bad, it looks like a bad flower. And we'll guide them to look into that, oh, what's that there? And just have to point there, and then they'll be like, where, where? You look my finger, there are a lot of things there, and then they just Different child comes up with different kind of observation. And these are all to paint your senses. You may touch it, feel it, um, feel it. Sometimes the animals will, will, will like split the healing part. You feel the animals instead of the chicken. Sometimes the children will be turning around chicken and they have chicks trying to hold it and touch the feathers more softly and gently. Yeah, it's all part of the great one to great one to do. And then from great four onwards, great one to three will be that. Because prior to grade one, um, to about nine years old, you will see that uh, the child is pretty much one with the world. It's like they can't even see themselves as separate. Like they don't know how to say that Chitika is. Uh, I'm hungry. It's more like Chitika is hungry. Especially you see in the kindergarten children, they can't they can't see themselves because they're part of the world. And when they see an um, an animal, they'll feel that they are the animal. They'll try to imitate how that the dog walks. It's like kind of natural in them. And from there, um, when about nine time, when they start to have a separation from the the world, they start to look at the world like, oh, actually, I have, I'm I'm myself, and whatever my thoughts I'm thinking and I'm feeling, it's inside me. It's actually not outside. So there's this is a point of time where they kind of have a separation in 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 some ways. And beginning of the end of the childhood, just prior to that, it's just childhood. This is the point of time where they have to realize they have to stop up. I'm actually alone in the world. I'm, I mean, it's not like daddy and mommy is part of me, or everyone around is part of me, not like me. It's more like, okay, so what am I going to do? Sometimes questions come up like um, insecurity. 
That's why you can see, like, when you know, I was teaching those schools, grade three students are usually very challenging. I come across some students jumping at teachers that don't know how to handle them and keeping and biting them because they, this is how they express themselves. If they don't know how, it's just so much insecurity going on inside them and stirring their emotions like, oh, I'm a kid, go in this world. Like, how are they going to handle this? This is the point of time where we're bringing different like, curriculum content to um, align with their feeling, to make them feel more secure and comfortable. Like for grade four onwards, uh, we have men and men works. Men, oh, grade three, with nature and science it involves farming. We do a lot of farming and um, shelter building using materials as well, it's also related to science. And then from there, for um, grade four, men and animals. We brought in men and animals because we want to give them a platform to see a relationship. How man is different as compared to animals. We will bring in the yeah, different animals' characteristics, like for example, the lions, brave and courageous, and the 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 cow is just calm and and of course at the same time we bring in some scientific scientific stuff like um cow has seven stomachs inside and what you need to digest and all you need to do is just plus eat and sleep, eat and sleep, and then they draw the cow out and and how it's related. Okay, like human beings as well, we can be as brave like a lion, bringing things like that to have a picture. Like, because most of these animals, basically animals, animal characteristics, you can somehow find it in the lower self of human beings or even the higher self as well. Like some lower self animals, like slower animals, it's more like the lower self of anger, the feeling of anger. Or jealousy and things like that, the feelings that you can see in my dogs. Dogs get jealous easily when you have to pet another dog. You can see it for great in humans as well. So we kind of bring this to them and have a comparison in some way to, um, to, to, to let them have an understanding, to begin to have an understanding with them, the animal world. Sometimes it's technology as well. And it grows. The next will be botany. We're bringing botany and look at. The plant as a whole, you take a whole plant and dissect it, and different parts of the life cycle of a plant, how it all grows, and the metamorphosis. We look into Bergen observations, you know, um, uh, the Johann von Goethe from uh, Germany, the philosopher and scientist. So, our science observation, our science um, curriculum is very much related to Bergen observation, the way we observe surrounding and our natural surroundings. Is not yeah, for botany and then physics is about uh, rhythmic. Um, again, like you said, the acoustic lines, magnetism, here and there, electricity is related to what they, they use, but it's really very simple because this is the point of time where we want to stimulate their interest in this. Um, like grade six or so, there are some grade six and seven they have, like, because they own female cameras. Like, for example, how cameras come about. Cameras come about from observing nature when you look at the reflection of the sun, uh, sun the light shines through, and then you can see the um, image printed out from, um, from the tree or the leaf on the ground. So that's the beginning of how um, the, the concept of um, having, a, the, the, having a, the image formed and be brought into a device like this. So we do. This little kilo camera and then go into the dark room, the children will experience it, even though they don't really know how it works, but it's more experiencing it now. And as it goes further, they will be the after that. Yeah, the experiment. So we put them, we put them into the shoes of the, the scientists at the point of time and, uh, and how they discover this particular um, science theory. So they will be like this little scientist. In fact, sometimes we will bring, it, bring them into, like, for example, Fahrenheit, the story of Fahrenheit, how we discovered Fahrenheit. He was working like the biography of um, Fahrenheit, and when he was in a carriage, and suddenly the, yeah, just give them, giving them a picture of how this comes up. That's how we teach. Yeah. So, basically, yeah. the physics chemistry and this, they will need to really work it out to understand what it is actually. So, they have to uh, set up the the experiment and then they have to recall the experiment and write them down and discuss then come to a conclusion by themselves. It's not like the conclusion will be given by teachers. 
So it's like they themselves, the scientists, to find out what is it about. So we will cover the food state, optic, warm, uh, uh, heat, and then the magnetic, electricity, and yeah, many. <laughs> um, as they grow older, and yes, so. mechanic, yes. Um, for example, like at the highest stage during their puberty time of puberty, when there are certain development changes. But development changes in their body and the children are not familiar, they just know their emotions are all in the top world, everything is just feeling and, and suddenly their body structure is changing, girls have more breasts and then guys, like, they have all this but they don't know what it is. That's when science comes in to guide them to, they'll start telling them about, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll discuss with them, they'll bring in anatomy, how a child is being, uh, how a child is being born, like, like from the, the stages, the process of a life, and first, with the physiology part, when you're in your mother's womb and how it develops over time, on, they draw it out, the drawing, and from there, um, uh, they will go to uh, the life of a child. What it takes to bring up a child. Because these are the time when they have the ability to, to um, have children themselves, because their body allows them to. But is this the right time for them to have? So we will let them. Reflect on themselves whether this is the time where they want to focus on another life when their own life is not even ready. So, yeah, science is in some ways to bring it in to get them to understand about themselves, pretty much. And astronomy at the later stage, uh, grade seven, yeah, grade seven will bring them out to observe the stars and alignment, but it's just pure yeah. that they are starting to see the world from another perspective. Like uh, for lower grades, they cannot see from outside, but they are inside, they are on Earth. But now they are coming to, they are actually grade 6 on Earth. They are starting, uh, this is the pre puberty age, age, and then they are starting like, want to uh, have a little bit more to look, uh, discover more, uh, to, 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 they want to know something from different perspective. And this is, as one of it is one of the ways. Uh, one one of the lessons that actually they can they can get to get to see something from the space for them. Yes, with that group, and then they will know how uh, how the movement, and then why sometimes we will see the moon in round shape, and sometimes in like uh, a, a sea, and yeah. So this is this is the astronomy, and they will need to uh, discover. They will need to draw it out and work it out to uh, try to imagine how, where is the star? Where is, the yeah. Then if I stand here on Earth, then where the moon will be and where the star and where will be? It will yeah. do a daily observation. Uh, she will record it daily, like the movement of the sun and the moon mm. is part of the record system. So you will go and then go and say this. These are actually some photos about the picture that we work with them uh, during lower grades. And I think yes. And so this is um, middle school, like grade four or five, they will teach you to study about photography. Then uh, we'll start from home surrounding and then local photography. Actually, from grade three, yeah, home surrounding and then local photography. From grade then, three, I think they start off with like, like simple, like, um, early early primary, they will start off with how their distance, how they how how they come to school, directions, the, the way from their home to school, and then from school back home, it's all with and, and where to the grandmother's house and all. They start with all these home surroundings, and from there only we need to to local to the house, the state, and from state to the country, and the country to the continent, and also around great states, you will see like Asia and Eurasia. That's comparison. Because at this stage, about 12 years old, the children will be able to have this concept of um, cause and effect and of comparing polarities as well, the two polarities, dark and light, and um, how they, they, can, they are able to compare and contrast. So that's why we bring in Asia, Eurasia, and pretty much we design it in a way that's also related to their history study. study. So yeah, this, this varies in different schools, like how the content varies, but for us, because of our local culture um, and geography. So this will be the work that the work rate, and then this will be the geography field trip. Then they will need to 
Uh, we will start to talk the story maybe in the planning. Then, yeah, for us, a school in Kuala Lumpur, then uh, we might focus Clam Valley for the first geography block. And then we will start from the sea. We will, uh, for time will be our target. <laughs> we, our target. we will start there to introduce how people live there. About geography is not only about the the land and sea and everything. It's also about how people live there, how they make make living and then because Pula Pudang is actually they have no land at all. They are that there's mangrove, a mangrove area, and then they build all these weed bridges and then so they build their house on top of the water and then their their vehicle is daily vehicle is boat. <laughs> So it's quite different uh, lifestyle from the uh, from from us who live in the city, and then so yeah, this is it. But this is a, a, a very much back to the past to bring them back to the past. That okay, there are some people who really live their daily lives in this way. So bring that bring all these functions from Pulau Ketam, and then slowly and it is on 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 the sea, and then slowly we will come in to the river river mouth, and then we go to plan. The, uh, the city of Klang, and then uh, we, will, we will also bring them to walk around over there uh, to understand how the city from the, uh, started from the past. Why the people choose to live here? What is the what is the uh, the the good good and bad of this city? And then yeah, so they will they will they will try to find out all this uh, uh, local history at the same time. When we, we are teaching about the local geography, and slowly we will come into the center of uh, Kuala Lumpur because this is how the this is how Kuala Lumpur was born. <laughs> yeah, started from plank, and then they they want to find something, and then they try and try and try to the water to the the plank river, and then until they found out this space, and then slowly they build. The buildings and then they started their own small town and then slowly become a big city like this. So this is how we bring out the geography block. Prior to, that example. prior to that green tree, we will have people's an occupation where the children will go around surveying what are the kind of occupation around them and in the past and how it all started. That's the foundation of the kind of kind of traditional skills. Traditional skills. If the people choose to live by the sea, then what they need to do to make sure they have something to eat. <laughs> and then, so if they choose to be a fisherman, then what fruits they need? Then how, if they need a net to, to catch the fish, then how can they make the net? How they tie the knot and how they make it to make everything possible. And the children don't experience it actually. It's all about experiencing the past first before um, experiencing the present or being conscious of the present. So, of course, at this stage, it's really difficult for them to experience the past unless we put it in. So that's, this is the whole curriculum. At the beginning stage, it's all the past, how it first started, origin people, the original people, how it started, the, the way of life, the occupation, the class of people in the sea and living in the forest, hunters and gatherers. Yeah, and then, yeah. And in grade six and seven, they begin to go out on the map. And this is a map for Asia. And then this is our. Uh, a drawing for <laughs> Changjiang in Changjiang River. Yeah, Yangtze River. Yeah, Yangtze River. Yes, okay, Yangtze River. Yeah. So this, this, we will study from our home surrounding and slowly expand it, expand it, and then onto the whole world. And uh, uh, yeah, from grade four, grade four, yeah, grade four until grade eight. So, but this geography is actually very much open. <laughs> and this is uh animal and this is a children to draw for animals. Yeah. And this will be the botany study here as well. So it's very much drawing that to have a connection with the this uh, is uh, the botany lessons and this is actually a chemistry experiment and which this is very much related uh, because they use the red cabbage to get this red color and then they use nine and then they use all the different things. So this is that. So this is the, 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 the 
like how we kind of stimulate their interest is don't tell, we just go in and do it, and then it's really <laughs> interesting. Like one of my, I need to find out. Yeah, one of my yeah, curious, yeah. like, oh, how to celebrate the school for day uh, chemistry, how to make fireworks, and then it comes in, and then they just start making something, and then blah, 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 and the children are like, whoa, what do you do? How do you do it? And then you get in, and you do it, and then step by step process. It's all about stimulating your interest to have this active participation in learning what is in front. This is the action. Yeah. It's girls and this is the moon. Then why sometimes? Uh, where, why we are daytime and nighttime and things like that? So, but yeah, during daytime, we thought the moon is not around, but the moon is actually still there, you know, yeah, everything. So, they, they will need, need to get it out and then. It is going up the So C is okay. History because I the geography is actually uh, um, very much connected to this history because uh, uh, how we, I mean how we uh, arrange for the curriculum for geography is actually very much related to history. Uh, when we talk about something in this area, then we'll bring in, uh, yeah. So, I, 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 we will start from fairy tales. Actually, history is, uh, we will start from storytelling, so, so storytelling at the lowest rate. So, fairy tales, fables, and things, and creation story for grade one, two, three. So, this is actually before we have this ancient civilization. The people in the past, they actually didn't. They didn't record down very much about their life. So maybe they're just telling verbally to say something that they believe or they know or they experience. They will just tell verbally. And then these are all the stories, the fable, uh, the fables of the tales or the creation stories, how how it um uh, yeah, how <laughs> I mean it's actually a lot uh, to do with the archetypes of the characters inside the fairy tale. And it represents the result the child, like the, the prince or the princess and the, the witch or the wizard or or either um the yeah with the negative and positive characters actually it's all kind of child of um archetypal um images in there in their body in, in, in their soul their 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 soul development in that sense. So from this story tale, we always have fairy tales, we always have a happy ending. That's the foundation of the beauty and the beginning of the marriage. Yes. And of course, at this stage, there's a lot of magical, uh, they can, the imagination at this stage, we can bring in magic and all, and they can still have an, a connection with magic. And we also have our local fairy tales as well, instead of the three pop, and we are only doing fairy tales. So, things will be something. When we want to discipline a child, instead of telling them, don't do this, we will put it in the story. And we don't we try not to hurt the dignity of the child by focusing on what he's doing wrong at this stage by saying in front of the whole class, you are naughty and things like that. No, we don't do that, even though the child is really we put it in a image form like stories. Because sometimes at this stage the child can't grasp that they are doing something wrong. They, they can't they can't have this understanding yet. So if we bring a different picture like the images of a fairy tale, they are able to relate to them. You can see their views, their eyes, and when something like is happening, and even tears sometimes coming out from their eyes when something sad is happening. They are really into the story. And from there, like a few times I have difficulty, like my students are quite arguing and things like that. I will come up with stories that uh, remind them like how it feels like when they were playing together happily, and from then, like moral stories behind this, this, this fairy tale, and all fairy tales pretty much have a certain kind of message they want to pass. So it really depends on the need of the children. There's no fixed fairy tale that we want. We will only tell this fairy tale. There are thousands and millions of fairy tales, and we'll pick out what is suitable for our child. Particularly, in this family. Uh, we should do that. And so good and bad. So for them, it's uh yeah. So they are actually trying to find the balance in between. Uh, this is also why the form flowing and great tool is standard the bigger form for them to see the other side. Yeah. And then this paper and things is actually fables very much to 
related to animals and lower uh yeah lower senses and then the same to be uh sustained story to bring the higher self to them so they will need to sense both because all of us we have both but we need to find the balance in between so this is how we choose the story in different age and then creation story at grade three is because of the change that she mentioned before that at grade three nine years old they will they will face uh sometimes to struggle by themselves then the creation story is actually uh, uh to kind of align with them to make them feel like okay now i this is a new start for me like how the world started so uh, mythology grade four mythology then uh, the Norse mythology is um, the first characters of how these characters in the past they overcome certain obstacles and kind of guiding them as well to to have this sort of sense of um um like how to handle challenges and you can see it in the characters of all these Norse uh, like for the Western we have Norse mythology and if you want to localize it there are some that some schools are using like I we actually have some Eastern mythology. Yeah, Eastern mythology. Yeah. Some stories that from very very long time, maybe four thousand seven thousand years ago. In fact, yeah, before the study of uh, ancient civilization. So this is the uh, story of mythology. And then, great five, great five will only be ancient civilization. And this is actually the process of uh the development of human beings is not only for a child it's like the whole we as a human being and the people the human beings in the past until now how they grow from back then until nowadays so how the, the whole development so this is why we design in this way and then so this ancient civilization is uh actually very much focus on their consciousness at that time also. So at, by uh, ancient civilization, they would settle to settle down themselves. So that people would settle, settle to settle down themselves. When we talk about ancient India, they are like they settle down, find a space to stay, stay and live there. But they uh, they don't sure. have this concept to do the farming. They're, they're very much and, not on earth because yes. you see in the past those farming and monks. Monks, monk, they will be out there meditating in the spiritual world and they are like yeah. the gatherers where they take food, food and food to eat. That's the consciousness actually inside of a child, baby. Like it, it all started, you don't know how to grow and all like, uh, from, from a child's consciousness, from nothingness. Just here, because of course, if you look into deeper, like um, one of my presentations talks about how um, the child has this connection with the spiritual world in some ways as well. Like, this is similar to what um, the original people, the natives, we have this kind of concept as well. So it's not something new. Yeah. And the spirit from there, like now we just came down on the earth and we don't know what, and then from there you go to Persia. Persia is where you start with farming, right? You start with farming and you learn how to farm. And from that farming, you go to Egypt and Mesopotamia. From there, you can see that management comes in, water sewage system comes in, and then you learn how to make bricks. With, uh, um, with uh, something soft and then how to transform it to something hard and big power from there. And then from, from in, um, Egypt, then it will go to great, great civilization. So yeah, it's all a different kind of consciousness. And from great civilization, you will look at all like um, all these philosophers, all the intellectual development at that stage of era. And from yeah. Greek to Roman, at around 12 age, uh, 12 years old Roman, they need rules and regulation and Roman introduce the Roman civilization law and order. So this is what they do. And in class, how we get do this together with them, like they will come up with certain rules in the class themselves. What can and cannot be done. And it's related to oh in the past during the Roman times and higher, this is what came about. And why do they need why do they need all these rules? It's all at this stage the understanding of the cause and effect. So it goes on to Renaissance of society and the industrial revolution and everything. So yeah. And this is actually what I say uh, one of the mythology, Eastern mythology uh, from China. 
story from China that before they started the the script, the, the their first civilization beside the Huang So yeah, so and this one will be the middle age. So this is some works for uh, higher grades, and then this will be the, this is one of the students' work. Uh, yeah, during uh the, the middle age study. So they 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 will work it out. It's not only like thinking, writing, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, they need to experience it. And back then, you know, this one the the the, the because. Why they have this kind of art is because it's last in, in the past, they don't have, they don't have this technique to make clear glass yet. So all the glass that they produce with some colors. Yeah. So and then they, they will cut it into small little pieces and then arrange them nicely according to the stories or the techniques. So this is how how, how they make it. But of course the project here is just a, a painting, not the Class making. <laughs> the design of yeah. your classroom is some way as well yeah, to be a kind of what we are teaching. And this is related to bring the Roman time. Um, and when we bring Roman history, that's why we they also do activities as mm -hmm. like overall. Yeah, and and you see this is actually Middle Ages and then the Roman discovery, industrial revolution. So when we look at the geography, you know, um, geography. Okay, so this is why we bring Asia and Eurasia here because at the Middle Ages, the migration period, and so all the people, people from the east who come to the uh, east to the west and then north to the south, and then they move all around. Yeah, and this is why we bring in Asia and Eurasia here too. So to, to make them like connect, they can connect the in between. And then South America and Africa, this is how the people in the, from the west. Uh, the age of discovery, they sail out to the ocean and then they come down and find a way and how they found out the South America and then when uh, some people go the other way around through Africa and then yeah, when, so this is why we put it here to yeah, connect with the history and Europe, Europe and North America is much uh, related to industrial revolution so this is we will design all the lessons all together. It's not history, history, geography, geography, but history, geography, art, music, everything will come together as a page, even language and mathematics. Yeah. So, so basically, these are our, our main lessons. And then, 20 minutes of subject lessons. <laughs> okay, so we talk a little bit about. Yeah, such a lessons is pretty much like how we integrate our thinking, feeling, and our will process together. So in the morning, we will have um main lesson to simulate our intellectual part. In the early afternoon, we'll have art lessons and feeling part. And in the late afternoon, we'll have um the movement part. Actually, these are all related to like today's researchers they found that our body is like top chronobiology, there's a rhythm, it's a stadium we will bring up. So, 100 years ago, Simon talked about this, and he specifically designed the curriculum, the, the lessons in such a such a way. And at that point, a lot of people don't really understand why. But uh, this this year, recent development researchers have proven that our body is like a clock. And when at this time, what are the type of things that we should be doing? Just like the Chinese as well, like certain hours, um, the time represents a certain organs. Like sometimes if that's your alarm, it's not comfortable, it's not well, but in the middle of the night, you will wake up at this time, you're always just uncomfortable. So it's kind of like a rhythm going on in our body. And one of my patients has got to do it with a breathing in and breathing out. When in the morning, it's all about intellectual breathing in, they need to concentrate and look into what is doing it and forming a picture inside their breathing in. It's, it's like how you are actually as a human being. And then once you're breathing in, if it's just kind of just breathing in, it's actually unhealthy for us. There's that she should have a flow of breathing in and breathing out. So the breathing out will be like to let them express that before I end my class, like every time when they have like something with concentrated mats and all, before I end my class, I will do some movement like stand and say, jump like a hop like a rabbit, and then you start hopping. So they don't think about anything, they just release out their body. So that's why we designed our curriculum, our lessons in such a way where such a lesson coming 
at a later um, later afternoon. So we will come. Up, we'll have art. Um, actually, art is. Any art is everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. It's a great when you think about water education is really big. It's a great art yes. and science together. Yes. Science when they this when they observe and analyze something, they will put up they will express through arts. So slab slabboard yeah. drawing and crayon drawing will be uh we 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 do this quite a lot during the lesson too. And then uh we have wax on wax painting and then this is a little different like the Normal watercolor painting. Wet, wet is actually the paper is wet and the color is wet. So we'll mix, uh, yeah. Uh, so wet on wet means th this is actually to let them fill with the colors first at the very beginning. So before we go into the uh, very uh, thick drawing, then we will do wet on wet painting for those grades. Grade one, two, three. One of the reasons why we're in a web is because the flow of the colors and the movement in there is not fixed. So when a child is coming to make a mistake in their art that they are painting, it is really not obvious. And you can even help, especially to build their confidence. Because at this stage, when their techniques are not there yet, they wouldn't have the skill to draw. We, but we need them to practice. But practicing, when they're practicing it and they see that they're drawing, it's, oh, I don't like this. And because they don't have the technique yet. And they, they will feel discouraged by the difficulty of it. We try to make it like it's not obvious. Every, everything just goes fine, and also we discover the colors because yeah. the, when you when you and we will only use three primary colors for yellow, blue, and red because they need to experience and feel how the colors mix together. The, uh, it's not telling by the teacher like okay, blue and yellow you get green. But they will discover it by themselves when they put them together because the, the paper is wet. So the color will automatically <laughs> mix together. Then they will see it. So this is how they experience with all the colors and slowly from these three primary colors, they are able to get more and more colors. Okay. So uh, for exploring colors. Yeah, exploring the colors. And then so later we'll do with the, the painting and then. Um, this is I think this is a secret projectors and shadows. It's like about it's actually something about the science of those, like physics. We talk about the light, where the directions come from, and then where you have the brighter part, and then where where you need to add the shadows and all these things. So this will be the uh, uh, light six. drawing. You have the light drawing with shadow, mm -hmm. and then the children will just draw it. And then the painting and the second drawing and by this is with seven for the perspective drawing, because they can see the line, they can see how it goes. It's not like everything is a, 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 a 2D thing, they need to have this ability to make it out. And then, so the great game will be better than anything else. So, this is, this is about art, and then yeah, this is the wet on wet painting that to let them experience the colors, and this is. Very much the great one wet painting. So they start to know all these three primary colors. I don't know, these are three primary colors. And then they work it out. And then if this one, imagine they come more together, then you will have another color. So then, so then this is all. All the painting here, we just use three colors: only yellow, blue, and red. Then we will we will discover all different 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 colors from these three kinds of colors. And of course, when we bring at the beginning, it's very um the imagination there. It's a color else, like and if you when you paint a certain color, you use a certain color like yellow, like happy, like you know the feeling of joyful. So we will actually every every art lesson after they finish. We'll put all the um, painting down yeah. together and then we'll walk together and observe our painting and others' painting and say, oh, so which one do you think has makes you feel most comfortable? We'll ask them to express their feeling because this is the purpose of art actually for yeah. their for We will explore the questions like which one is the most beautiful one? <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we don't ask this kind of questions, <laughs> but we will ask some questions like which uh, if there there are something if the children say oh this looks like a mountain okay so which mountain 
you feel it is the easiest one to find to climb to, to, to hike then they would oh this one this one and if they uh if they paint something and then they say that with the sunlight yellow color and then which one is the brightest the hottest thing and they they can they can tell by themselves they will choose it and they will they will observe and then so for later at uh higher grade then this will be the and uh the painting and then so this is this is start from like this. <laughs> so they need to go into this. Then, but this at the same time the skin is very important. The skin to to use the color and the brush to them is actually very important. And uh, up until if I'm not uh, up until grade six, we're actually giving the a brush one single brush to do everything. Uh, yeah, and the brush is two two cm <laughs> two cm brush to do everything. Yeah, so they need to learn how to use the brush, and then uh sometimes if I want to paint the whole background and what is the background, and if I want to do the small little details on the people's face, and then what I need to do, how can I use the brush? Um, so great one, two, and three is about instilling healthy habits as well. So how they take care of their material, how they um, how they use it, respect that we have a certain few few material. Yes. So how to keep it and how to keep it clean and safe and, 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 and tidy. Yeah, that that is the big thing. So craft. Um for craft, the yeah, big one for craft actually craft is very much related to their water skills, the fine, especially the fine water skills. And Local and content, like in most small schools in Europe, they start with weaving, but for here, for, I started with weaving, simple weaving, because we give them an idea about how crafts are going to be made. And they pick up the leaves, the leather leaves, and then they weave it themselves, and from there form a cloth. And or either take cotton, peel the cotton, and tease it with the finger, or you can tease it, but not more because in Malaysia we don't have to. So we use cotton, tease it with the fingers, and then how it forms, oh, this is a thread, and from there, you can use it to eat or either to feed. So it's a, basically a step by step on how technology today. Craft is very much related to technology today. And different crafts for different uh, needs, cross stage, for example, where the children at this stage is squatting at this point, they can squat stitch. Needle making, tie dyeing, all these are part of, they make their own choice, they make their own um, pencil case, they make their own. The clothes, they make their own language. Yeah, it's just the timing for, for, for that. And also, they will look into the old cultures as well. They'll bring in historical um, crafts. We will bring, of course, at the beginning, we'll start with the ancient techniques before we go to today's technique with all this um, digital technology. We go with just practical technology in the past. And that's just a whole. Uh, yeah, shoe, maybe they will make their own shoe. Because at this stage, they are. Basics, and they need to focus. Yeah, this will be the making and making their own doll. And of course, every time when we are doing something, it's related to what they need. It's the and what they what they like. But we need something in the class, then we'll make it. We need something instead of buying it, having the tendency to okay, we use money to solve our problem. We use our hands to solve our problem. And these are all part of crowds and that's the most important in all of them. Yeah, and then from there, like for example, when you are doing man and animal, um on the this is this is the way this is of the animal where they learn geography and um zoology, and then you do it together. This is in the afternoon lesson where this is uh, more movement related, we will look into what they did in the morning and relate it to the afternoon. So like for music, for example, it's related to Rome. Rome civilization, you learn Rome music, and then after that, the afternoon, you do Rome uh, Roman craft and uh, other stuff. So it's like a whole integration of the two, the threefold music. This is not from today. Yeah, this is actually so weird. This is actually so weird. And so weird. And so weird. And every, um, by the end of the year, you will take out all your work and you will display it like a little exhibition. And that's how the assessment comes in. Without them realizing that. So this is uh, this is also craft. Uh, yeah. So we uh, we will do big spread modeling for grade one, two, three. 
follower with beeswax uh, modeling, and then then only go to the clay modeling. So this beeswax modeling is very small item, so just a part of the modeling one, mm -hmm. and then they need to slowly use their hands and their fingers of the arm to make to mold it to shape it to shape it. Okay, and then uh, grade four or uh, round grade four will be got come into clay modeling. And then with five, and then slowly they will take up some little project in the school that maybe the classroom need a bookshelf and they have to work it out, and then maybe a yeah, simple cut and print that they teach. Yeah. So this one uh, is the beeswax modeling and the clay. So we'll work together with the story, first of the work with especially, and we will need to give story to them and then they will work it out. The so also I'm not related to the neurons in your brain as well, the right and left connection of the hemisphere. Why am I defining this? And they will be the work for with five and six, and then the two to start with the small building, and then we also on big project. And then music, okay. Let's talk a little bit one for music. Good. Wood of the sea is actually something very special, and yeah, only one of education we use it uh, for our lower grade students. And why are we so particular in all these kind of uh, to choose different types of music for the children is because the, the younger age children they actually they have their uh, their listening is not uh same like us. They they can more connected to higher pitch sound, and then they need some harmony sound to them. So mood of the big uh, is uh, for the starting of grade one. They will come in all the songs with a rhythm, uh, a breathing in and out rhythm. So uh, this is a little bit too technical, <laughs> and then yeah. So pentatonic pentatonic will be introduced uh, before grade three or so. Before grade three, we were using pentatonic song, and then we play pentatonic flute, and then uh, the the lyre, pentatonic lyre, and then all is about pentatonic. So we, because with these pentatonic uh, instruments, actually they can make uh, very harmony uh, songs or rhythms or melody by themselves. It, 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 Nothing wrong for them. It's not uh, that there are no fixed rules for them. Like this one cannot, that one cannot. And then, so this is uh, this is a way to help them to build up the confidence in them at the same time. So to feel good in doing the music, to feel good uh, in art. So uh, that uh, that food will come in at grade three. Then they 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 will they will. Start to have a change here, and then uh, we will go to traditional streams, also grade three, grade four, uh, kind of, and then we will have a little grade four onwards. Actually, we will have a little ensemble that if they can play, uh, some maybe some lower grade can play the flute, and some people can sing, and then someone can play the violin, and then we will make a little ensemble together. Yeah, so. Uh, and then grade five will introduce our program holder, the bigger one. And then <laughs> this, is, this is very much related to your breathing. Because they use a small little fluid to blow it and they need to control their breath. And then to use a bigger one is different. You have to you have to undo everything for the small little fluid and then to learn some new techniques and skills. Including how to breathe at uh, at the same time when you play the the We integrate music into our main lesson every morning before we start our class. We will have some um, training. Usually, it's between the breathing at the same time, um, also the feeling, and then has some training as well. So every day before we start our lesson. Yes. Yeah. So the 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 singing here is uh, uh music is actually. Uh, we will have two parts. One is the singing part, and the other part is with uh, the same uh, melody with instruments. 
So the singing one, uh, for grade one, they will have a, a group singing. So everyone comes together and then sing together. For grade two, they can have some a little a little thing like call and response. I will say I will say like so some, some, some call and response and then slowly they'll come to uh ostinato ostinato is like um uh we'll separate them into two groups or maybe three groups that are yeah. so it's like a, a few groups and then one a group one of the groups they will continue uh they will keep repeating the same same uh, uh same little short part like i will say uh i will say and then she will sing the whole song, something like that. So the, yeah, so this is Ostinato. And then rounds is like, uh, <laughs> okay, so rounds is um, when one starts singing and then the next group starts giving the next, the beginning of yes. the, the first one. So before she finished, I start the second part. And then we can, the, at the very beginning, it's only two, two parts up. But slowly we can break into like three, four, five parts. So they just really need to change their listening skill as well because there are a lot of other voices going on, but you still need to be inwardly strong to feel what you are hearing, like what you need to hear. That's the whole thing as well. And yeah, so okay, I think and this can for music and then this is a student playing with the yeah group. And then for movement in model for education, it's like physical education here is very much based on Bokhman gymnastics. Bokhman gymnastics in the past, uh, during the first world of school, uh, Steiner invited Bokhman to come and design a curriculum specifically for world of students. Because at this stage, their aim is very different as compared to the mainstream education. So it really looks into the developmental pages of the child. And in movement, uh, Bokhman is pretty much the spatial dynamics. And the uprightness, like a human being, what what determines a human being? What makes us a human being? It's actually the uprightness of ourselves, and how if we do a lot of exercises to bring them to be upright, and also when it goes down, all the way down, when it goes down and then it goes up, and it's related to spatial distance as well, spatial uh, dynamics, like the surrounding, uh, left, right, up, down, uh, the plane, the uh, the six different planes. Um, that's when we slowly bring into uh, our activities. Like for lower grades, it's pretty much games and movement. Basically, I tell a story about this game of the giant, the giant who loves to eat, you know, like little children. And, but this one will be about way two more tense, a, 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 a tense feeling, and then a relaxation feeling. So when they're tense, it actually helps them focus because they're really in the mood. But I'll tell a story, and then I'm the giant, and suddenly I'll start chasing after the giant, and start chasing after the children. And that's also to train their move, um, their, their movement, their skills, their running and all. And balancing activities at the beginning. Grade one, it will be in a circle, and then we'll play some games around the circle. But um, some of the children's consciousness, they like more excitement. Because, yeah, so I will bring some uh, games, not all the way, but some games that are just like chasing, chasing, and tapping. And then after the chasing part, I'll come down with some tapping games, some tapping movements like this. Um, and from there, then we can go into a breathing out game, go and start running again. And then the next thing, okay, how we end, then we have some little spin games um, to calm them down again. So it's like a, a, a moment of relaxation and a moment of time going on. And it's, we don't bring in sports at a young age because sports are too fixed with a lot of food. As well, movement, giving yeah, the movement is very much related to discipline in, in here. Like the children, children will need to learn how to focus on the rules to there are certain rules in this game and for example like sometimes some child or some children they can't socialize we'll play some games that help them socialize around like the farmer and the crow the farmer the, the crow becomes a, a scarecrow and another crow needs another chance to come and turn around and to save the farm uh, to save the crow and then before the magic will save you and then they will go and then run around so it's like um classmates helping each other out through games so this we form a kind of team building without them realizing it actually. And all these games that we are doing as like around grade three onwards, more with techniques like throwing, catching balls, these are all um, 
kind of like a skill drill, like pre sports skills, but in a small game. And also, let's say for language, like um, I will like they have to recite certain language, uh, certain certain poem to for, for the when the chicken is uh, being chased by the eagle. So yeah. at that point of time when they are just playing, they need to pick up the language as well, like um some uh riddle uh, some tongue twisters and things like that. And for maths, okay. maths will be skipping rope, skipping rope and the rhythm, and then it goes gets more complex. Every day I will have a few minutes of session of skipping rope with my students because this helps with their rhythm, their rhythm uh, as well. And then as uh, as it goes further higher, like sometime around grade right, six, grade six when they are more, it's also very much related to the development stages, but it's very hard to stay already. Like for example, like grade six, their body is built out this stage their leg, and then there's time to play dodge ball. So they hit, hit the child with the, 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 the body to be aware of their own body part and stuff like that, and it goes on to fitness. And when the child, uh, with the, 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 the adolescent, they are more ready for more structured, abstract games that it has to be like this. Then we'll bring in sports. Some people might say that it will be a bit too late, but actually, no, prior to that, it's all the pre sports skills that we're doing. And we will play games that's related to building the ball for basketball, but they don't. But it's not like the, the typical basketball game. So these are all. That's how we kind of arrange the learning activities. Yeah. In it. Oh, as well as social. That's what I said. We talk about each other to socialize together. Right. Yeah. And yeah. And with the also that this is. <laughs> All well, in case in grade five, the whole Malaysia Swallow School, they will all come together with us, all the grade five, because at that point they are learning ancient Greek, and then they will experience a little bit about um how uh how the Greek and the Greek Greek Olympic Games come about, and then they will have this experience. That for a three days trip, they go out, and then they will have they will camp there with the teachers without their parents, and they will have all these activities. And there's no win and lose, no competition. We don't actually encourage um, healthy competition by competing with themselves, how they feel better, um, how, how they are better as compared to before. We don't like specifically uh, guide them to compete with each other and stuff. When I see my students are competing, let's say I have two lines and then they're doing animal walk, and I see them competing and I will put into one line. So they don't have this feeling of competing uh, with others. This can get quite unhealthy. Especially at the young age. So, uh, it is actually quite a lot to cover from grade one to grade eight in these two hours. So we try our best to bring up the rough idea how we design the curriculum and then how how we plan out our lessons and why we uh, we do it in this way. So, uh, yeah. So, so any uh, actually would like to quote uh, UNESCO. <laughs> Uh, what UNESCO has to say about water education. We have fully supported and uh, recognized water education, even though it's not in the mainstream, uh, it's not a mainstream education. Um, water education places the development of the individual child, child is a focal point. Convinced that a healthy individual is a prerequisite for a healthy society. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>